congratulations on Montreal Girls. It is a beautiful film. It is fantastic. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, I guess let's start with why you wanted to tell this story. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for uh, for your comments. Um, well, uh, it's a very personal film. It's inspired by, by my own journey navigating the subcultures in Montreal about 15 years ago. And the story is about Rami, a Middle Eastern young man who goes to Montreal to study medicine at university because that is what his parents want. They want him to become a doctor. But when he gets there, he meets with his cousin who is a, in a punk rock band and the cousin really brings him into this new world of subcultures of the Montreal underground where he meets two irresistible Montreal girls that will challenge his perceptions and reveal his destiny to him, which is uh, to become a poet and follow his heart. So the film uh, really resonates with uh, who I was and what I have become as an artist myself. So very personal. So, um, you know, you've been involved with several projects before. Why did you decide to both write and direct this one? Uh, because it's so personal, the story of Rami, it's, my, it's a reflection of my own coming of age. Mm -hmm. Uh, coming from a very conservative family, very traditional background, uh, Latin American, that is. Um, and I really wanted to keep the authentic voice within the film. And it's a story I always wanted to tell. So when the opportunity came to work with my co-writer, Kamal John Iskander, when I moved to L.A. in 2014, um, it, it just became a natural process mm -hmm. that we co-wrote the script and it was meant for me to direct. Awesome. And this, you know, you chose two careers that are very polar opposite, you know, from being a doctor to being a poet. Uh, wh why choose those yeah. two careers as opposed to any other science or art? Uh, well, because uh, Kamal coming from a Middle Eastern background, I know our parents from uh, immigrant mm -hmm. families. They always see their kids to study to become a doctor because it's a very prestigious title, very respected, and you earn a lot of money. So um, I wanted the, the character to become a poet because I was myself a poet when I was young, when I was a teenager. So it was something that I knew I could speak about in a very authentic way. And I write poetry myself, so uh, all the poetry in the film is uh, written by Kamal or myself. And it, it was just a natural process. I wanted uh, two different careers because if he went from being a doctor to an engineer, it wouldn't have the same impact. So I wanted him to feel free, to feel like a bohemian, to feel like he could be anything. Uh, even his father calls him a vagabond. So that was a very important contrast that I wanted to create in Montreal Girls. Definitely, and there's even a contrast between the, the parents, uh, the way the mother sees him and the way the father sees him. Yeah. Uh, how yeah. personal was that? And, and how do you bring out those types of emotions in people as a director? You know, the father and the mother are exactly my mom and dad. Uh, they passed away already. But my mother died of cancer, and I remember her telling my brother, who was studying um, uh, science, she said, I will stay alive to see you graduate. So that line in the film comes from my own mom, and Natalie Tanu, the actress who plays the mom, she looks so much like my mom, so every time, it's so authentic, so personal. I, I cry every time I see that scene. For the father, he's an accountant, and my father was an accountant, so he was very rational, <clears throat> very into the numbers, the calculations, the facts, and that contrast of the mother being more open, more empathetic, more caring, and the dad being very strict and very rational really created that bipolarity in which Rami evolves and has to become who he is, find his own truth and his own identity. Definitely. And um, th this story arc is amazing. There's some 
really key points where you have to hit, which are somewhat spoilers to the movie, but how do you keep that pace? Because as a viewer, I was just enthralled. It, it was it captivated me. It captured me throughout the entire movie. Oh, thank you. I think it has to do a lot with the rhythm and the pacing. I was uh, lucky enough to be the editor of the film and I edited at home without a team, without a post team during the pandemic. So I had a lot of time in my living room. I created this uh, editing, uh, edi editing suite and I just lost myself in the edit. And the music in the film really helped me create that pacing and that rhythm, that tempo that really speaks to the, the vibrations, the frequencies of the heart and how you, you receive uh, a scene, an emotion uh, with the composer uh, Suad Bushnak, who is phenomenal. Uh, we, we created the score based on the chakra frequencies and vibrations and the colors associated with it. So everything was designed to create a realm of experience that is so subtle, but so visceral that it really spoke to uh, the audience, I believe. Definitely, and let's talk a little bit about the music because it's not something you hear on many soundtracks. It's not the pop hits, it's not the ones that are gonna be grabbing your attention that you've heard billions of times on the radio. Why choose this soundtrack when it, it's, it's so experimental, it's so different? Uh, I wanted the soundtrack to reflect the subcultures, but also the, the moods and the emotional journey of Rami. So my research of the, the songs was very thorough. I spent six months researching songs and really listening to everything and anything that could come my way. I sent uh, <clears throat> calls on the internet to musicians on different websites and groups saying, send me your songs. If you're preparing an album, if you have uh, music, send it to me. And I listened to hundreds of hours of music to really uh, select the ones that resonated with the story, but also that spoke uh, as a self-contained uh, universe, you know, the songs really speak to what is going on in his mind or the lyrics will evoke a certain mood. <clears throat> so th that was a, a research that I really took on me and we didn't even have a budget to buy all these songs to license them. We had a tiny, tiny little independent budget, but I went uh, out of my way to contact the musicians, the bands, the, the labels, write them letters and hundreds of emails and rejections and to convince them. And I said, listen, this song belongs in my movie. It will really elevate the story to the next level. So can you give me permission to use it? And eventually most people said yes, because I showed them a rough cut and they saw the, the creativity behind it and why uh, the song was so important to me. And I was very lucky to gather over 23 songs uh, the punk rock songs were composed by my life partner, David Deyas, who is a musician, and he also plays the drummer in the film. And uh, they were created with the lyrics of Tamar in Tamar's language and the way he speaks. And Jade Hasune, the actor who plays Tamar, uh, sang those songs in the studio. So th the whole process was very integrated to the story very cohesive and that's what i love about it and when it comes to the actors they, they seem so amazing in this movie how how thrilled were you to get such <clears throat> talented cast the cast took and it was a, a long casting process a lot of auditions self-tapes hunting the internet for all these wonderful actors what was important for me and mandatory it was my requirement that each actor reflected the culture, the, the ethnicity, the authenticity of the character in their own language or the accent, even somebody who speaks French, French from Quebec is not the same as French from uh, France, etc. Et so the whole casting was very authentic. And for my lead actor uh, who plays Rami, Hakim Brahimi, that was another journey in itself. I found him on Instagram because I couldn't find anywhere 
my Remy. Like we did hundreds of auditions. All the agents sent us uh, submissions of their actors, their clients, callbacks, and I couldn't find my Remy until I found him on Instagram. Uh, based on the photo that I saw and uh, I asked my assistant Sophia to to reach out to him and ask him to put himself on tape and he sent us a self tape and two days later he was uh, in my audition room uh, trying scenes out with the lead actress uh, Jasmine Apparent, the blonde who plays Desiree. So we tried a few scenes and I felt he was very raw, very green, you know, he wasn't a trained actor. He was just a good looking young boy from Montreal. But the authenticity of his life was, a match. it matched Remy's authenticity. So I worked with him with Chi Energy, a method that I teach for a full year. And I also worked in documentary mode to capture his reactions and capture his emotions in real time as a documentary. So it always felt very real and very authentic. Definitely. And there's a line uh, in the beginning of the movie that says, you know what they say about Montreal girls. In this film, what are you saying about Montreal, Montreal girls? Well, Montreal girls are very diverse, very open-minded, free-spirited, creative. There's a joie de vivre. From my observation, of course, I never pretend to that the title represents all of the Montreal girls or all of the girls in Montreal, because that, that's not possible. But the girls in the film are, are a reflection of myself and of the girls that I have met in my journey navigating the subcultures. So they are very unique, very underground, very alternative, and very free-spirited. They are in control of their actions. They do whatever they want and whatever pleases them. And that was so important for me as a female director to really empower my characters that they can own, take ownership of their sexuality and also how they carry themselves. Of course, there's black and white, there's a contrast and the darkness and the lightness of Desiree and Yaz. Yaz being the narcissistic version of the Montreal girl in the story and, and Desiree is more the angelic, the spiritual, the lighter more uh, wise uh, character but i think together they create this uh, duality that allows rami to overcome his fears and really make a decision for his own and not based on which girl do i want to sleep with or i am infatuated with this girl and i'm going to follow her they're like uh, like tamar says girls are like buses you miss one you catch the next but it's really a metaphor of how the boys think in their own youthful, you know, macho voice, if I can tell. Definitely. Well, congratulations on this. It is a wonderful watch. I can't wait to own this on a physical, physical copy someday, hopefully. And once again, congratulations on everything. Thank you, Jesus. It's really an amazing journey. And I invite everyone to go see it in a theater because the film is very visual and the score, the sounds, it's really a cinematic experience to be seen and watched on the big screen. Uh, so we will have um, a, a premiere, a, a launch party on uh, Thursday, June 1st. And uh, whoever shows up to that screening, there's going to be the cast and crew, the Q&A, and then a little cocktail party after. So um, I hope you come. I will try to be there, yes. Yeah.